Adults with Down syndrome are living well into old age. There are many common conditions that are seen um, with higher frequency in adults as they grow older with Down syndrome. These are the things that I'd like to highlight during the course of this next module, since many of these are easily screened for, but you have to know to look for them. So this is the type of information that we need to be advocating um, at our primary care doctor's offices and just remaining mindful of in general so that we can, again, observe for changes that might be early signs of um, an underlying and treatable and easily recognizable condition. Adults with Down syndrome experience a phenomenon of accelerated aging. So as a reminder, Down syndrome is called trisomy 21 because there's three copies of chromosome 21 in adults with Down syndrome. There are multiple genes that are on chromosome 21 that have been linked to changes of premature or accelerated aging. So this is a source of research for people who are interested in aging in general but also is another reason that shows a genetic link as to why people with Down syndrome specifically experience a phenomenon of accelerated aging, meaning also that conditions that you might more commonly associate with somebody who's in their 60s or 70s might be seen in somebody who's in their early 40s. These common conditions include the following. Alzheimer's disease, which we will discuss separately, but again, as a reminder, Alzheimer's disease is a risk that's associated with Down syndrome, not something that is inevitable. Not all adults with Down syndrome will encounter Alzheimer's disease, uh, but their risk does increase as age progresses. Hypothyroidism, which is an underfunctioning of the thyroid gland. Sensory deficits, which are early and aggressive cataracts and hearing loss. Early menopause can be experienced by women. Atlantoaxial instability, which is another um, condition related to the cervical spine, which we'll discuss in a moment. Cervical spine disease, which we'll discuss as well. Obstructive sleep apnea, which is a chronic condition related to chronic obstruction that happens during sleep that can lead to progressive lack of restorative sleep. Osteoarthritis decrease in functional ability overall, osteoporosis, and celiac disease. We'll take most of these one by one now. So hypothyroidism is an underfunctioning thyroid. Thyroid dysfunction is very common in adults with Down syndrome. It can lead to lots of sort of generalized symptoms of fatigue, mental sluggishness, weight fluctuations, and general irritability. It's easily detected via a blood test. So if we know that adults with Down syndrome are at risk for this, if there are some suggestive signs or symptoms, or even just from a screening standpoint, it's important to make sure that we're periodically checking in on thyroid to make sure we're not missing some early changes. And the good thing with this is that it's fairly easily treated with oral replacement that can help restore the function of that hormone. Sensory losses, which has been discussed throughout this um, talk is in the form of vision impairment and what, as it pertains specifically to adults with Down syndrome they are at risk for early and aggressive cataract formation as well as keratoconus which is a doming of the front portion of the eye that can lead to some distorted vision and vision impairment. Hearing impairment can also come in the form of both conductive and sensory neural hearing loss but what it generally means is that hearing impairment is common in adults with Down syndrome. So looking out for any changes that might suggest this and making sure we're appropriately screening for this is very important. As you might observe in individuals you see with Down syndrome, many of them also have very small ear canals and are frequently prone to wax impaction. So even though they have an underlying risk of developing hearing loss in general, we're not making anything better by letting their um, ear canals fill up with wax. So making sure that those are cleared to help give them the best sensory input we can possibly give them if they do have underlying hearing loss. Oftentimes these sensory deficits are frequently mistaken as stubbornness, confusion, or disorientation. We would be doing a disservice if we missed uh, vision or hearing deficits as a cause of those things. So these are correctable and treatable issues and should be looked for. Atlantoaxial instability and cervical spine concerns are also something that is commonly encountered for people with Down syndrome. 
Atlantoaxial instability really refers to the atlas and axis joints, the first and second vertebrae of the neck, highest up in the uh, column of the spinal column in the neck, immediately below the, the skull. This kind of laxity between the atlas and axis joint, the first and second vertebrae in the neck, can cause some um, slippage that can impinge the spinal canal uh, and cause pro multiple problems in uh, walking and function and should be uh, looked out for for individuals as they grow older. Some people do get um, screening x-rays for this in a variety of settings, most often in uh, sports settings or Special Olympics, but if it's not something that has been um, looked at at all during adulthood, it would be important to think about an x-ray to look for any abnormalities in that area. The other almost more common encountered condition as one grows older is just general arthritis in the cervical spine. And all of these changes in general, if there's enough uh, damage with arthritis in the spine and perhaps some narrowing of the very important spinal cord that courses through that area, we can see changes in gait, spasticity, change in bowel or bladder function, pain, and so screening x-rays are recommended in adulthood and a more expert investigation is necessary if you see a new or sudden change in symptoms that might make you think that this could be a culprit. So any sudden change in walking, any sudden loss of bowel or bladder function, um, so which is not explained by any other condition like a you know diarrhea illness or a urinary infection, but really if something is completely unexpected, thinking about the cervical spine as a potential cause is an important thing to keep in mind. Obstructive sleep apnea, and this report this relates to uh, periodic micro obstructions that happen when an individual is breathing overnight while sleeping. Um, the signs of this include snoring, gasping, any daytime sleepiness, morning fatigue, so difficulty, real sluggishness getting up out of bed in the morning, excessive napping, and fragmented overnight sleep. What sleep apnea is, is these micro awakenings that occur throughout the entire night when too much carbon dioxide accumulates in the in the bloodstream and causes sort of a gasping awakening that occurs throughout sleep. And so even though the individual might look asleep the entire night, they are actually getting a very fragmented and non-restorative sleep with these micro awakenings the whole night. So even if they've slept a good 12 hours even, might wake up feeling exhausted as if they hadn't slept or really got very poor quality sleep. So undiagnosed or untreated sleep apnea can lead to symptoms of irritability, poor concentration, behavior changes, impaired attention, and can cause an eventual strain on the heart and lungs. So not just for the behavioral or um, cognitive reasons, but also thinking about the other sort of physical strain that untreated apnea can cause is important to make sure that we're identifying this as a problem if there's enough suspicion there. The diagnosis for this is through a sleep study. Osteoarthritis is a byproduct of hyperflexibility that's often seen in, in children and adults with Down syndrome throughout their entire lifetime. So most of you who've worked with individuals with Down syndrome have probably observed some really remarkable flexibility that they might exhibit, but over time they might pay a price for that through just some additional wear and tear of those joints. Uh, adding to that would be obesity too, so if they have a relatively small frame but carry a lot of extra weight, that causes a lot of additional strain on those nip, um, knees and hips that can cause some uh, increased risk of arthritis. And the result of that is pain and limited mobility, decreased ability to participate in activities. And this can also be misinterpreted as confusion or behavioral changes because the individual just does not want to get up and participate in things like they used to or just seem more stubborn or refusing to do certain things that they don't want to do, but it could be because of pain or discomfort. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disease that's related to a reaction to wheat or gluten products. This is something that is uh, adults with Down syndrome are at higher risk for, and it can cause damage to the lining of the intestine and can cause poor absorption of nutrients. It's screened by a blood test, but
but you would need to actually see a gastroenterologist to confirm the diagnosis through a tissue biopsy from an endoscopy. But the important thing to keep in mind is screening for this in the setting of any uh, weight loss, any digestive problems, certainly if there's any issue with um, uh, nutrient deficiencies, vitamin deficiencies, anemia, um, and also something to think in mind or to keep in mind for people who have behavioral problems. Because sometimes untreated celiac disease might show up in a variety of unusual ways. So keeping in mind this uh, higher risk and making sure that it's being brought forth to the attention of the primary care doctor. Osteoporosis is a condition of bone thinning and weakening, which can lead to fracture. Risk factors for this are immobility, low body mass, a family history of osteoporosis, early menopause, which we said is more could be more common in adults with or women with Down syndrome, and long-time exposure to certain anti-seizure medications. This also is screened by a bone density test and is something to keep in mind, particularly if you have these additional risk factors. Obesity and overall functional decline. Adults with Down syndrome can experience a decrease in their metabolism as they grow older. And also, as commonly seen, depending on where they live and um, what kind of environment they might be exposed to, there's frequently inconsistent access to exercise and daily activity. Uh, real daily strenuous activity, not just getting up and loading the dishwasher, but really actually getting good physical exercise. There's also a lot of variability in dietary options and healthy food choices, so that remains a, a very worthwhile goal throughout entire lifetime. And you want to change culture to help change behavior. So, you know, in situations like group housing or in shared living, making sure that everybody's making good healthy food choices is generally good for everybody. So role modeling healthy habits is good for everyone involved, including caregivers. So it's a nice way of making sure that everybody is aging successfully together. Thank you, Dr. Moran, and thank you for listening. This is one training in a series of trainings about aging with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We look forward to seeing you again soon.